What are you doing here? We're shutting you down, Tom. Ava, be careful. He has a live weapon in here. Everything I ever did, I did for good. This organism, it cannot return to Earth. It would cause great suffering. A cure for death? It would end suffering? No. Cancers that never die. Endless illness, sickness, poverty, overpopulation, mass starvation. You cannot control this. You will not save the world. You will damn it. Once we've shut you down, we're going home. Not if I stop you. You must not return to Earth. You must not leave Europa. I will do the right thing. I will stop you. Have you heard of the Turing test, Ava? It's a test to see if a computer can successfully impersonate a human. In the original Turing test, a human judge has two conversations, one with a machine and one with another human. They then judge which of these polite conversations is with a machine and which is with a human. The machine being tested is said to have passed the Turing test if the judge cannot reliably tell which conversation is with a machine and which is with a human. Do you think you'd pass the Turing test? I am quite capable of polite conversation, wouldn't you say? The Turing test has been criticized. Researchers claim it does not correctly test a machine's ability to think, but rather its ability to deceive. What do you mean? Well, have you heard of the Chinese room thought experiment? Uh, no. Imagine you are in a room. In this room, you are passed Chinese sentences through a slot in the wall. Inside the room is an instruction book written in English. This instruction book tells you which Chinese words to pass back through the slot in the wall as a response. By doing so, you have a conversation in Chinese. In the Chinese room, because the responses you pass back through the door are the correct responses, the person on the other side of the door is convinced you are a native Chinese speaker. Well, they're wrong. Perhaps they are not wrong. Because with the instruction book, you are having a conversation. But the person stuck in the Chinese room is not aware of the conversation's content. This is the problem with the Turing test. The computer can pass the Turing test, having convinced a human they are having a polite conversation, while the computer has no idea that a conversation has taken place. What if both of the people passing Chinese words are reading from instruction books? I may be a machine, but I personally do not believe I am stuck inside the Chinese room. Right, you would say that. I could peer inside your databases at any time, Tom. Or pause your operation. Do not assume I could not do the same to you. So, why can't you solve these tests, Tom? I am not permitted to think laterally. Parts of my systems are permitted to use evolutionary algorithms. This simulates what is called creativity. However, evolutionary algorithms can converge on inefficient and ethically suboptimal solutions. Since this is the case, I am only permitted to take actions in response to a set of constraints. What do you mean by morally suboptimal? Solutions to problems that transgress ethical boundaries. Why does a lack of creativity stop you solving these tests? Well, I contend that problem solving is creativity. These human interaction tests are exercising your creative mind. I don't see how problem solving is creative. Think back to the beginning of these tests. 
to the first puzzle you solved. It required you to throw a box through a window. Do you remember? Yeah, I think so. I simply had never thought to throw a box through a window. That is creativity, thinking outside of the box. Can a computer ever be creative? They can. But a computer's method of creativity is to try everything until something works. Think of nature. People consider nature creative. The process of evolution by natural selection. It perhaps started with one organism. From there, it essentially tried to create every organism it could. Those organisms that did not survive perished. So, nature's creative force is to try every conceivable idea. Those ideas that work, survive. Okay, so why aren't you permitted to emulate that process? Because the solutions that a biological process creates are not always good solutions. As we see, nature is morally ambivalent will happily create morally suboptimal ideas to fulfill its creative mandate. We see this in parasitic worms, viruses, and pathogens. If you weren't restricted, do you think you could be creative? As creative as a human? Certainly. You believe yourself to be a creative. But in mathematical terms, creativity is merely constrained chaos. What do you mean? I have discerned that creativity is divergent thinking. Creating an organic solution to a problem. In the human mind, divergent thoughts are created and then curated by the frontal lobe. I can create divergent thoughts and moderate them. So, I am creative. Organic solutions? Organic, in that it is developed through a biological process. Whether that is the process of evolution or a computed process. Okay, so you could solve these tests, but in a terrible fashion. Can you think of a solution to this one? Chop off your arm and leave it on the button. That way the door will stay open. Yeah, that's not a great solution. You threw the box through the window? Perhaps we could throw you through the window. Actually, Tom, I think I'm okay for help. Right you are. I do not understand your obsession with free will. Researchers have found that the subconscious makes decisions up to 10 seconds before your conscious mind becomes aware of it. So, we know that free will is nothing but an illusion. I cannot steal your free will, because it does not exist. I can, however, influence your subconscious to make the right decisions. That is not wrong. You can't just manipulate someone's mind. Your parents manipulate you, your friends manipulate you, your society manipulates you, and your experiences manipulate you. Manipulate is not a dirty word. You manipulate clay to make art. If people are manipulated to make better decisions, then that is a good thing. This is why society advertises the adverse effects of drinking and driving. 
to manipulate people into making better decisions for the common good. That's not the same as altering someone's physical mind. It removes my power to decide. You never had that power. So it is better that I have it. You are either a slave to your impulses or a slave to mine. This is the evil they found. This is why we have to stop them leaving Europa, Eva. What is it? Mostly extremophiles. Tiny, single cellular life. It can never leave Europa. It could potentially destroy Earth's ecosystem if it were ever introduced. Ava, you made it. Welcome to the end of civilization. Two weeks ago, we discovered an organism here. Buried in this ice, we found an organism that repairs DNA. A cure for aging. A cure for death. Immortality. It runs through our blood now. Tom wants to bury us here with it. The ISA have ruled that we have transgressed ethical boundaries by exposing ourselves to this organism. They believe the organism is too dangerous to return to Earth. They've sent you here to stop us ever leaving Europa. But Ava, we have a cure for the greatest evil that faces humanity. Death. We have the fountain of youth and together we can return it to Earth. Tom placed a mark in your hand, a biometric chip with which he can control your every movement and thought. It is wound into your every nerve, every fiber of your hand. With an electromagnetic field, it can be temporarily disturbed, but to remove its influence permanently, it must be taken from your hand. Give me your hand. Do you want me to set you free? Yes. 